Hello, it's Virgil here. It's been a while since my last video. Work has been keeping me busy for the last three months, so I wasn't able to upload anything. But today we are going to I'm going to show you a quick demo of LoRa still. Um, we have a node here, uh, which, which, which is basically an embed board. I have a Nucleo L476RJ development kit. And sitting on top is basically the official Semtec um, Shield um, SX1276. It's got two antennas, one for 433 MHz. And the other one is actually for 915 MHz, the short, um, the short one. So I'm going to show you... Um, since my last video, I've been asked too many times whether it's possible for the nodes to be able to receive anything from the server. And I'll tell you that it's possible, but there are some restrictions. Okay, um, just a background. There, there are actually three types of lower uh, nodes, uh, three classes. One is class A, which is suitable for um, devices that would occasionally transmit to the server, transmit data to the server. And within that time when it tries to transmit, it actually switches to receive immediately after it tries to transmit data. So these are class A devices. These are suitable for battery operated devices when um, a node would transmit, receive, and then goes back to sleep again. And we also have this class B devices, which operates like a, like a beacon. And the other one is class C. Now, not all of these classes are supported by TTN right now. TTN probably would support only class A and class B. But I don't know whether or when um, TTN or the Things Network will be able to support class C device. Now, these class C device are always continuously listening for the server to send them data. They're basically pulling the server every now and then. And... Of course, if you have a device which actually you know pulls data every now and then, it it's not as energy as efficient as the ones um, like the ones uh, with class A, because your you know your device has to be on all the time, be able to receive data asynchronously from the from the server. Okay, so in my setup, I have um, I have this LoRa node, which is an embed board. My gateway consists of a Raspberry Pi with an attached Rack A31 um, gateway. So as you can see, we have a Raspberry Pi at the bottom. And on top of that, we have the Rack 381, oh, sorry, A31 gateway. It also have a converter board in the middle, which is basically connected to a GPS antenna. So it provides location-based information. Now, it's not connected to Wi-Fi right now. I'm connecting it to Ethernet. I'm planning to put um, a PoE device so that I can power it up with just the Ethernet um, cable. Okay, so going back to my setup, um, what you can see on my computer screen is actually the log from this uh, Class A device. And every now and then, the device is sleeping. And when it tries to wake up, it tries to send the data from its sensor to uh, TTN. So going into my TTN page, you can see the data that is being transmitted from our uh, class A device. So as you can see here, the last data that was trans transmitted from our sensor value is 45. And as you can see also from the screen, I have 48, sorry, 43.8. Not sure where the, uh, it's, um, it's a bit slow, but as you can see, we're basically updating our server with uh, the data from this node. Now, again, the question that was asked is whether it's possible to send data to our nodes. Yes, it's possible. If you go to the overview screen of your device, down at the bottom, you have a downlink form. Some settings here, scheduling, replace first, last, and then you have this FP port and you have the payload at the bottom. Now this FP port is actually your application port. I have already defined that one in my source code. Um, let's go to embed config. And I've defined it somewhere else here. Uh, LoRa application port. As you can see, I've set it to 15. 
embed conf app port and that's also the same value that we're going to um, supply in the form so I'm going to set it to 15 I'm going to send data uh, it's actually in binary right now I'm going to type in dead uh, beef it's all in hexadecimal I'm going to send out four bytes and I'm also going to watch my com10 which is the for the logs whether we have read that data and there's also another party terminal here which listens to my gateway whether the gateway receives that data from TTN and then it forwards that data onto my device so right now we were just basically seeing stat which is basically transmitted by our gateway to TTN and then we have received a packet from our LoRa node to TTN now we're going to do a downlink message I'm going to click on the send button here and as you can see right after I click that we have a data that is being queued and then let's wait for the data to come into our gateway and it happens right after we transmitted something so if you can see here we have uh, no we still have a stack let's wait for it okay so we have receive packet and there you have it so you see this re received message from network server we have the data that's being received from TTN and the data length is 4 so this is a class A device basically what is the class A what does a class A do uh, LoRa class A do again it tries to receive only after transmission and then after it tries to receive data whether it has received data or not it then goes back to sleep again so that's basically the behavior that's a use case of a typical class A LoRa node next um, TTN doesn't support class C yet uh, but we're going to re-implement this whole thing using an ASP32 okay so watch out for that um, the, by the way the libraries and the source code for this LoRa embed board is already out there on the internet this is basically just one of the examples I've only tried to um, adapt the code so that I can you know package the the data into Cayenne LPP and upload it to TTN other than that I haven't changed anything from the uh, default examples uh, for for embed Okay, so that's it guys, just a quick um, demo of how you can, you know, how your LoRa node will be able to receive you know, data from TTN. Okay, so again, uh, on my next video, I'll, I'll try to uh, convert or port this code to, to ASP32 and see what happens. Okay, that's all for now. Bye-bye.